So how do you not get hacked? How do you protect your network, whether it's your home network or your business network? In this video, we're going to go through the fundamentals of network security, firewalls, intrusion prevention, and things that everyone can and should do. And the first thing to understand is in order to secure your network, you need to secure your connection to the internet. And that begins with your router. Now, many of you may be using the default router that has been provided by your internet service provider. So we'll start right there. First off, in order to access it, you want to go to 192.168.1.1 and you should be greeted with a screen like this. If you don't know what the username and password should be, just go to your router physically where it's located, check the physical box and the label should tell you the username and password if you haven't changed it. And that's where the first tip comes in. So if you haven't changed it and the password is something as simple as password or something that's just preset with your device, you probably want to go into your device settings. In this case, it's gonna be under access management and then just change your password right away. Because otherwise, anybody near your house, maybe your neighbors could just use your internet and you wouldn't even know. So you could literally have a van down the street, hack into your Wi-Fi, simple as that, just by guessing that the password's password. Another setting you might wanna look into here is your firewall. Now, depending on the sophistication of the router you're using, this may be a very detailed page, very simple page. In this case, it's kind of intermediate. So we've got a firewall level, which is set to middle, that's recommended. But if we go into the filter criteria, we can now set up a custom blacklist. What this means is I can now decide what websites can and cannot be visited on this network. So I could just type in a new entry saying Microsoft and then URL Microsoft.com. And this would basically ban any computer on my entire network from visiting this website. And you could actually use it to stop Windows from spying on you. If you've been watching the channel, you know I did a very popular video. I think it's got almost a million views now using Wireshark to look at the network traffic all the spying or telemetry websites a new laptop was connecting to. And what you could do is you could take the domains from that video, pop them in here, click apply, and they would be blocked throughout your network, not just your PC, your phone, everything. Now you could also do the same thing for IP addresses. So if you have a destination IP specifically that you want to block or a range of IPs that you want to block, you can easily blacklist that by entering it here and hitting apply. Now, this is all stuff you can do with your default router, no equipment required. You don't even have to install anything, but now we're going to level it up. So the next thing we're going to look at is a real firewall. Now there's various ways of using a more powerful firewall than what's included on your router. You could buy a hardware firewall or you could just use your own router that you can change the operating system of to install a firewall of your choice. Over here, I have the uh, free Sophos Home Firewall installed that you can just go ahead and download for free right here. And you can install it on a mini PC on a compatible router. And then you would have industry level control of your network. Keep in mind, this is an entire operating system. It's not a small application that you just install on your Windows PC. So you'd need a dedicated device to install this on. But again, it can give you control over your whole network and you can even institute network level VPN. So you don't have to install VPN on your device. Automatically, your entire network would be connected via VPN. We've also got uh, zero day protection, intrusion prevention, lots of categories for blocking things on the web so if you wanted to filter specific types of things like risky downloads adult content we could easily do that another big advantage of having a dedicated firewall like this is the ability to block inbound attacks and even notice malware in your network so for example if a crypto miner is making an outbound connection you might be able to block it with your firewall same thing if a ransomware is connecting to a command and control server another thing that you absolutely should install is some kind of intrusion detection system and this is what is actively going to prevent hackers from infiltrating your network so for example remote desktop and various other features can allow people to brute force your computer's password try to log 
walk in and then take control of your system, implant malware, you'll be surprised how much attackers can do with a simple net scan if a machine is not sufficiently protected. An IDS can prevent that. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install CrowdSec, which is an open source community-based intrusion detection system. You can install it in two minutes and it's cross-platform. So you can do it on Windows, Linux, whatever you use. And they're also the sponsors of this video. So thank you, CrowdSec. In order to use this, well, firstly, you just need to sign up. It's pretty simple. And that's gonna give you access to um, the web console. And after that, you just have to install the agent to detect attacks on whatever systems you wanna install it on. As you can see, there are lots of options. You can do it on Linux, FreeBSD, Windows, and my personal favorite, Docker. And this is the option I'm gonna be using today. So if you don't know what Docker is, Docker is basically a virtualization environment for cross-platform software. So it's an environment where I could have server-grade software running on any system that I want, be it Windows, Linux, and right here I've got a Windows system. You can download and install Docker and then it just runs on your taskbar. And then you can just do a search for CrowdSec. And then all you have to do is uh, choose this option, crowd security slash CrowdSec and click on run. And that's going to install CrowdSec on your system. Like I mentioned, this is cross-platform, so it doesn't really matter whether it's Linux or Windows. Now, if you want, you can give this a container name. So I'm just gonna call it CrowdSec for convenience. It doesn't really matter if you don't do that, it's just gonna be randomly generated. And then it's installed and running on the system. And now we just have to go back to our main UI here and enroll that particular device into our web management console. And the way to do that is just to copy the simple command, go back into Docker, click on terminal, and then just paste that there. Just remove the sudo, you don't need that press enter, and it should be all good. Now, if we go back to our web UI, you can see we've got this enrollment request. Just have to accept that and boom, now it's all set up. Now we have our intrusion detection set up on that system. Now, if you did wanna install this natively, you can also do that by going through the documentation here to install CrowdSec on Windows. And some of the things it can do for you is brute force detection. So again, if somebody's trying to brute force through your network using SMB, that is what WannaCry did, by the way, or RDP, again, very commonly used by ransomware to infiltrate networks, this would be able to detect and block those attempts. It would also be able to block HTTP attacks if you're hosting a server, and it can also do network scan detection. So again, even if an attacker is looking for vulnerabilities in your network, you can kind of detect that. All of that set up and ready to go in two minutes. Now I'll also be doing some additional workshops for this. So if you're interested in that, make sure to join our Discord. Now, another thing you might wanna look at is threat intelligence. This is going to allow you to verify if a particular IP is currently involved in malicious activity. So if you scroll down, you can see some of the most aggressive ones. So this one is trying to brute force SSH. So this would be an attempt to hack into a Linux server. Probably we can see an HTTP brute force here coming from India, another SSH brute force from the US. So if you do notice any kind of inbound traffic from these IPs, you just wanna block it right away from your firewall. If you don't wanna to dabble too much into the network side of things, just wanna download some things straight and easy on your Windows system, you could try Komodo Firewall. It's gonna give you a great level of control. If you want something that's not necessarily as powerful, but prettier to look at, you can check out Glasswire. Now, hopefully this helps you understand a little bit about the steps that you could be taking to protect your network from hackers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And again, big thanks to CrowdSec for sponsoring these educational videos. Do give them a shot using the link in description and check out some of the other videos on the PC Security channel. Subscribe because we've got a lot of awesome stuff coming up, especially since I'm at the RSA conference next week. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.